surrender I surrender Father and God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, this morning as we submit ourselves to you in obedience to your word, Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you find us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask grace to return back to the Father this morning. Lord, you grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. As we share your word, Lord, speak to our hearts. That which you want us to know, Lord, reveal to us. So that our life will become an embodiment of your glory. Thank you, Lord, for the answered prayer. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's have our seat in God's presence. I want to bless God for the grace that God has given to me this morning to be standing before children of God to minister. I also want to thank the lead pastor for the opportunity that he has given to me. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless him and um, his ministry will not like, lack anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, the people of God, as we open our hearts to receive from God this morning, the Lord will meet us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus Christ. The topic we will be considering together this morning says, living to submit. Living to submit. Living to submit. Let's open our Bible to the book of Job, chapter 22. Job, chapter 22. I'm going to read from verse 21 to 29. The Bible says, Acquaint now thyself with him. Another translation says, Submit to God and be at peace with him. Or King James Version says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby God shall come unto thee. He said, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. For thou, but if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pray that, pay thy vows. Verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy face. So when men say there's a casting down, hallelujah, what will be our testimony? When we say the price of fuel has gone up, what will be our testimony? The blessing of the Lord make it rich and had no sorrow. He said he will meet our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. This will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. The title once again says, Living to Submit. If you study from our anchor scripture, the Bible from verse 23 downwards, the Bible was trying to share with us attributes for those who submit attributes for those who acquaint themselves unto the Lord, attributes of those who surrender themselves unto the Lord, attributes of those who freely give themselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So there's a huge difference between us coming to church every service day and for us actually surrendering or submitting ourselves to the Lord. Of course, we may say, after all, I attend service. I was born a Christian. As a matter of fact, I was born in a Christian home, in a mission home. But the question to you and I this morning is that have we freely and truly submitted unto the Lord? Hallelujah. No, there's a difference between having a theoretical knowledge of the person of Jesus Christ and also experiencing who Jesus Christ is. It is very easy for you to, you know, come to church, you hear the word of the Lord, but who is God to you? Who is Jesus to you? I love the question, the man of God, that God used during Sunday school. He said, who, what, what is an atheist? Do you know God for yourself? Or you are only after what others are saying about God? So, the knowledge and the experience of God that you carry on the inside of you is what birth the great exploits that God demands that you and I, that we enjoy in him. Hallelujah. You know, John, the apostle, Worked with Jesus for three and a half years. But after Jesus had gone and he had had first hand experience about the person of Jesus Christ, when he wanted to start First John, if you read from chapter one to from chapter one, verse one, he said, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled. It is very easy for you to see. It is another thing for you to hear. But it's a different ball game if your hand has handled real life scenarios of who Christ is. And the only way we can actually enjoy this experience is when we freely submit ourselves, acquaint ourselves, surrender ourselves, give ourselves unto our maker. I pray this morning, power and the grace, for us to willingly submit the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. So this experience that we gain from knowing the person of Christ is what Daniel summed up in Daniel chapter 11 from verse 32, he said, but the people that do know their God, said they will do what? They will do great exploits. So, doing great exploits is in the knowing of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, when you don't know him, it will be very difficult for you to do great exploits. Remember, the Bible says, some will say, but I healed in your name. I did a lot of things in your name. But alas, at the end, Jesus said, Get thee away from me, ye workers of iniquity. Why? They had, they saw, but they took Jesus as a different being. They did not experience the person of Jesus Christ. But Jesus is saying, for you and I, if we can actually submit ourselves, we will do great exploits. And this will be our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at verse 33 that follows it, it said those who submit, who have that knowledge to do great exploits, it said 
they shall understand among the people and they shall instruct many. By the special grace of God, what Gospel Apostolic Church, Ikeja Parish, is set up by God to do is to instruct many so that all of us can go out there and instruct others. We are being groomed here every day so that we can represent Christ wherever we go. But we, when we find it difficult to willingly submit to the instruction of God that is given in the house, how do we represent Christ when we go out there? So only those who carry that knowledge and the understanding of who Christ is will instruct others. Power and the grace for us to willingly submit the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. But this morning God is saying in verse 2, uh, verse 22 of the, our anchor scripture. He said, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his word in thy mouth. How can you do this? He said, if thou return to the almighty. So God is calling you and I to return to the almighty. He is the sheep, is the shepherd of our soul. And until we return to him, we may not be able to align Unto purpose. In First Peter chapter 2, if you read from verse 25, the Bible says, For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. So God is calling you and I to return to the shepherd of our soul. That Bible in verse 23 says, If you return, you will receive. How do you return? By submitting to God. So what does it take for us to return? To some people, to return means to re-examine their spiritual stand with God. That is what returning means to some people. You know, oftentimes, Bible says, oh, we like sheep. We have gone astray. How do we go astray? Every stage in a man's life requires that you want to meet up to certain standard of life. And if care is not taken, those standards may make us waver or stray from the line of God for us. As a young child, by the time you are entering into university for the first time, you are leaving the comfort of your parents. God help you. Even if your father is a pastor, God help you that you don't stray. So when you have not willingly submitted I can tell you that there's a system within that institution that has been targeted, specially built to stray every child of God. But when you are not freely submitted to the Lord, you may fall into this plan of the devil. Also, when we graduate from school and we start to walk, as a young man who has just started work, there are challenges in the office that will want you or that will want to question your faith. They will say there are policies and procedures in that organization that when you cannot beat them, the only thing you can do is to join them. And it will be between you and your maker. Does this glorify God? Does it not glorify God? But still, I need a job. So when you have not freely submitted to God, we find ourselves in areas like this where little compromise may make us stray from the paths of the Father. Also, when we grow up and we become family man, trying to provide for our children, for our wives, for our family, and you know, the, the, the bills are so enormous. Are the challenges not making us to try and see how we can help ourselves, even in the office, by manipulating things? These are Challenges of life that comes to man every stage of life that might make us stray from the master. But today, God is saying it is time for we to re-examine ourselves. We need to find out, are we still in right standing with the Lord or the cares of this world? Measuring to standard, filling parts of the park astray us from the devil, from the Lord. I pray, power and the grace, for us to re-examine ourselves and return to the Father, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, if you read from verse 5, the Bible says, examine yourself whether ye be in faith. 
He said, prove your own self, know ye not your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you. So you need to constantly re-examine yourself. The work that I'm doing constantly now or pre pre presently now, has it taken Christ away from me? The school that I've found myself, has it taken Christ away from me? The job that I do as a businessman, is it making me to compromise? Jesus is asking us this morning that we should examine ourselves so that we will not stray. The power and the grace not to stray from the master, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't forget in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, the Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have torn everyone to his own way. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth tried in the face of a man, but it said the hand thereof is the path of destruction. May we not stray from the path of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So another, to re, to to. To return means to constantly show ourselves as an example of a believer. The question to us again this morning, oh, I may not have strayed, but am I an example of a believer? God is asking us this morning, in your workplace, in your business, when you talk, in your conversation, in all that you do, are you an example of a believer. Hallelujah. Paul was admonishing Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4. If you read from verse 12, he said, Let no man despise your youth, but be thou an example of a believer. In what? In words, in conversation, in charity, in spirits, in faith, in purity. He went for that. He said, Till I come, give attendance give attention to what? to reading to exhortation and to doctrine do we still give attendance to reading the word of the Lord before you step out is a busy traffic um, situation that we have now traffic here and there do we still give attention to the word of the Lord are we an example of a believer in our words, in our conversation, in all that we do? Are we truly an example of a believer? Hallelujah. Another, to return to the Lord means to appraise oneself so as to improve in our current stand in God. Thank God for the life that you are living currently. But today, I'm here to tell you that there is more. God is saying it is time for you to come up either. The Bible says you have dwelt too long on this mountain. Oh, I have been a member of Ikeja Parish for so long. But which area are you serving? And you have been serving for some years. Are you trying to improve on what the Lord has committed into your hands? God is saying it's time for you to come up either. There is more. Somebody say it. There is more. There is more. There is more. There is more. I remember there's a sermon that Baba Sadela gave in headquarters many years ago. He said, when you feel you have known God so much, you have seen his glory, he said the Lord will transform himself. You begin to see another dimension of God that you do not understand. And each time you think to have attained all, God changes the dimension again. He hops the game. And God is saying for every one of us here in the Kedja Parish, it is time to appraise and see whether God wants you to, want to commit more into your hands. Are you available for the service? He said, I stand at the door knocking whosoever will open. He said, I will come in unto him and I will sup with him. He said, I seek a man. God is constantly seeking. It is time for us to appraise what I'm doing. Is that the best I can do for the Lord? Can I improve on my service for the Lord? The Lord is saying there's more. It is time for you to appraise yourself to help the standard so that the Lord can bless you. Hallelujah. 
In 2 Chronicles, uh, Corinthians chapter 8, the Bible says in verse 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and in utterance and in knowledge and in all diligence and in your love for us, it says, see that ye abound in this grace also. God is asking you to abound much more. The grace has been made available for you. The grace is available for us in this house. But are we tapping into that grace? Are we exploring that grace to the fullness? You know, there's no way you can address matters like this that you will not go back to admonition of Paul to so many people. Paul also spoke to Timothy concerning this matter. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you read from verse 13, he said, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou art heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. He said, That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwell in you. What has been committed into your hands? Are you still keeping it? Are you improving on it? Remember the parable of the talents. That man that was given five never st stayed on five. He multiplied it. The one that was given two, he multiplied it. The one that God has given to you, have you multiplied it? God is saying another way you can return to him this morning is to appraise yourself and do more because there is more. Power and the grace for us to build ourselves much more for God and submit to him. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. So if we go to our anchor scripture, Job chapter 22, I want us to look at something there. In verse 22, the Bible says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his word in thy mouth. How can you receive from him? The, how you can receive from him is in verse 33. He said, If thou return to the Almighty. So it is time for us to return to the Almighty. So when you return to the Almighty, the Almighty becomes the lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. When you return to the Almighty, it will become easy for you to follow his commandments. When you return to the Almighty, it will be very easy for you to submit unto him. So God is telling us this morning that it's time for us to check ourselves and return unto the Almighty. And when we return unto Almighty, if you look at the verses, after that verse 23, the Lord began to tell us many benefits that he has made available for us. But the truth I want to tell us this morning is that return must precede receive. A lot of us come to church because we want to come and receive something from the Lord. A lot of us, the reason why we are here is because we have need. But God is saying, those needs are nothing to him. But what he's demanding from you is to submit first. When you return and you submit, then capacity to receive is granted into your system. You receive without, just, without, without asking. So God is asking every one of us, to understand that we have to return. No matter what it is that you are seeking God for, it's nothing to God. No matter how big it may be in your eyes, God is telling us this morning that it's nothing to him. Only if you can submit yourself to him and return to the maker. Find your place in God and the Lord will find you. Power and grace for us to find our place in God. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. So what are the benefits? that we get when we submit to God. In verse 23, the first benefit is there. He said, if thou return to the Almighty, thou shall be built up. Thou shall put away iniquity far away from thee. So the first benefit when you return or submit to God is that the Lord will build you up. Hallelujah. The Lord is interested in building us up. He said he has not called the house of Jacob to serve him in vain. When you submit, he builds up. When you submit to him, he will build you up. Hallelujah. 
So when we submit to God, we become spiritually built up and become immune to the works of the devil. So sin will be far away from you. Hallelujah. The tricks, the wiles of the devil, you know, the deception of the devil, it will be far away from you. Why? Because you have submitted to God. He gives you the power to carry his old hammer so that you will be able to, that will guide you against every dart of the enemy. Hallelujah. When you submit to him, he said he's going to give you something. That thing is in the book of Ephesians. If you read from verse 6, from chapter 6, if you read from verse 10, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the old hammer of God that ye may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. So when you submit to the Lord and the Lord builds you up, you receive capacity to be able to stand against the wires of the devil. The Bible says he has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when you submit to God, he said he will give you life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. So when you submit to him, eh, he gives you power against the wise of the devil. In verse 12, he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We need to understand this. Why God wants you to submit to him is the fact that that brother that you are looking at, that sister that you are looking at is not the problem. She's just being manipulated by the system to work against you. And you'll be looking at her, not knowing that there are principalities and powers that have been fashioned to work against every believer. So believers should understand that it is not the person that you see. You should know that he's just playing the role that the system has given to him or her to be a weapon or a fashion that has been meant for you. That's why the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He said, wherefore, take unto you the whole hammer of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day. Praise God. The evil day, they say, is coming. But I can tell you it's here. And until we submit, we may fall to the deception of the devil. You know, one of those days that um, when you see the manipulation of the devil, you see it in dark areas. You see it in dirty areas. No, no not anymore. There are the things that are appealing to everyone. The evil days are here. And God is saying, when you submit to him, he builds you up and he gives you the whole armor to be able to stand against all of this. Hallelujah. So when you are built up by God, you become matured in faith, spiritually empowered, knowledgeable and robust in kingdom matters with great depth, doing great exploits in the kingdom. So the Lord wants to build you up so that you can do great exploits in the kingdom. Hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 2, if you read from verse 6, the Bible says, As ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have seen and taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. God wants to establish you in faith. He wants to build you up. And that is one of the benefits that we receive when we submit to the Lord. Another benefit that we receive is found in that our anchor scripture, if you read from verse 24. The Bible says in Job 22, verse 24, it says, Then shall thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Hallelujah. So another benefit is that we shall be great blessed by the Lord. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich and had no sorrow. So God says when you submit he said he will bless you. Hallelujah. The almighty God becomes your exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. That was what he told Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. He said after these things the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying fear not Abraham I am thy shield 
and thy exceeding great reward. So when you fear and submit unto the Lord, the Lord make all grace to abound towards you. It becomes your shield and your buckler. It becomes your exceeding great reward. The Bible says, why you ask, is asking. Before you ask, he has answered. That is God when you submit for him, up to him. You don't need to ask before he knows. But all this is achievable in a place of submission. Hallelujah. The power and the grace to willingly submit, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. When you submit, the Almighty becomes your gold and your choicest silver, your abundance, your perfect peace, and you, it become, you become a partaker of God's goodness. And also, you become an heir of Christ. Hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 2, if you read verse 9, the Bible says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of God's head. So if he dwells in all fullness and you submit, you receive that fullness. Because he said, That which I have, I give unto you. In verse 10, he said, And ye are complete in him. Hallelujah. So whatever he gives to you makes you complete. I don't know. That's missing link in your life. But Jesus is saying to you that you are complete in him this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what that thing you are looking for that is making you to run Esther Scatter, that is making you to follow the mundane things of this world. But as you submit this morning, the Lord said he will meet you at the point of his needs in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah power and the grace for us to be complete in him. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 8, if you read from verse 16, the Bible says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Listen in verse 17, he said, and if children, then hear, hear of God and joint hear with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together with him. Hallelujah. So whatever Jesus connotes, you begin to tap into it. Hallelujah. Greater works. Greater works. That is what Jesus said will be your portion if you can submit to him. Power and the grace for us to willingly submit and allow Christ to be the shepherd of our soul. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In verse 25 of that, of that anchor scripture, the Bible says, for, men sh for then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. So when you submit to God, the Bible says, you shall have your delight in the Almighty. Hallelujah. You won't have your delight in the mundane things. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, what they are after is, oh, I want to make money. I want to build a house. I want to buy beautiful cars. They have their delight in the things of this world. But when you submit, your delight will be to meet God's requirement for your life. To know what God is saying concerning your life. It will, when you submit, you begin to align to purpose. You become God's delight. Ah, a man served God and God opened his mouth out of everybody in the world and he said, this is a man after my own heart. Hallelujah. How would you enjoy for God to declare that you're a man after his own heart? You become the delight of the Lord. Whatever you do gladdens the heart of the Father. Hallelujah. That is where the Lord wants us to get to. When we appraise ourselves and we submit and surrender all to him, we become the delight of the Father. God told, while they were baptizing Jesus, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. 
power and the grace to become the delight of the Father, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, All other things shall be added unto you. So what men are running after begins to run after you. Why? Because you are the delights of the Father. Before you ask, he will answer. A man gave himself a sacrifice unto the Lord and God met with him and said, Son, what do you want? And when he made his request, God said, what you have requested for is too, more, is too low. I'm going to increase it. Why? Because at that level, he has become the delight of the Father. God wants you to truly become the delights of the Father. And you can become the delights of the Father in the place of absolute submission. So I don't know what you are doing for the Lord at the moment. But God is saying there's more. I don't know what you are struggling with. But the Lord is saying if you can submit, you can receive. If you can return, you can receive. Power and the grace to return to the Father. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. In verse 27 of that anchor scripture, the Bible says, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Hallelujah. So when you submit unto the Lord, you receive answers to prayer. Only those who truly submit to God completely receive speedy answers to their prayers. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, the Bible says, And whatsoever ye ask, we receive in him, because we keep his commandments. Remember what he told us in that 22. He said, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his word in your heart. When you keep his commandments, he answers your prayer. When you lay up his word in your heart, he answers your prayer. Hallelujah. God is asking that we lay, we, 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 we give ourselves to him so that he can freely answer our prayers. Amen. In 1 John chapter 5, if you read from verse 14, the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, the Bible says, he heareth us. Hallelujah. In verse 15, he said, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have done what? The, he has received the desires from him. So God is in the business of answering prayers. Only if we can submit to him. He said, either two, you have not asked. He said, you should ask until your joy is full. He wants to make our joy full. But first, you have to return and submit. Receive grace to submit to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, another benefit in verse 28 and 29. He said, thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall do what? Shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Hallelujah. In verse 29, he said, When men say there's a cast down, then thou shalt say there's a lifting up. So when you submit, hallelujah, your testimony will be different from others. When you submit, you have fruitful testimony. When men say there's casting down, your testimony will be what? When people are saying weapons form against them is prospering, what will you say? No weapon form against me will prosper. Hallelujah. When men say there's a cast down, you will say what? There's a lifting up. Bible says as they move from city to city, from one place to another, he said, he suffer no man to do them aught. He said, he rebuke kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So you don't need to fear. Hallelujah. 
He said he will meet all our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. This will be our testimony. The Bible says, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. So when you submit, your testimony becomes different. Elisha, a man, submitted to God and his servant that did not submit to God, they saw the same scenario, but they understood differently. The Syrian army came and the servant came out and said, yeah, we are doomed today. But a man that has given himself to the Lord, he saw the Syrian army and he said, they that are with us are more than that that are with them. That's the power of submission. When you submit, you see differently. When you submit, your testimony is different. People will tell you, are you not in this economy? Are you not in the same Nigeria with us? Why? Because your own testimony is different. Hallelujah. So you begin to carry fruitful testimony up and down. Ah, are you managing in this world, this thing? You say, ah, the Lord is supplying all my needs. How? Don't worry. Come with me. The Bible says, taste and see. And see that what? The Lord is good. So God wants to give all of us fruitful testimony if we can really submit. And see, what a better time for God to give us fruitful testimony. Period now that men are looking for ways out of the situation where they are now. Let them come and meet you and say, I perceive that you're a child of God. How are you doing it? What is the source of your abundance? What is the source of your strength? You know, that was the, the style Jesus looked, used. John the, Apostle, uh, John the Baptist pointed at Jesus. And some disciples of John the Baptist went after Jesus. And when they saw Jesus, where, where, where do you stay? He said, come and see. They saw, and since that time, they never went back from Jesus. From today, as people see your life as an example of a believer, they will not go back into the world in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will be a prototype of Christ in our time in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because your testimony, the Lord wants to turn it around for good in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. As we begin to round off, the Bible says in that verse 28 it said thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways. God wants to shine light upon our ways. If only we can truly submit to him. You want to lighten up your ways. Those dark places that are giving you issues. That is making you consider that am I actually a child of God? Why is this happening to me? Why am I going through what I'm going through? When you submit, the Lord will shine is light upon your ways. Receive power to submit this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I ask for grace. To truly and completely submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's turn it to God in prayer. He said he's ready to shine light upon our ways. If we can truly submit to him. Uh, Lord, I receive grace to truly submit this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I will live to submit to you 
so that you can light up my ways in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's open our hearts for a minute. Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to a ceremony with Jesus. And while the ceremony was going on, luck came into that ceremony. They began to lack a particular thing. And Mary went to meet his son. I know you have experienced you firsthand. It's not what the angel has said now. I have experienced you for over 30 years. And says, son, their wine is spent. And Jesus said, my hour has not come. But Mary told those servants, he said, wait on this man. Don't bother yourself running about to go and look for wine. Wait on him. He said his hour has not come. Though it tarry, wait. It shall not tarry. I want you to wait on Jesus. The servant waited on Jesus until when Jesus was ready for them. Are you willing to wait until when Jesus is ready for you? I can assure you that it will not tarry if only you can wait. They never questioned or queried God or Jesus. They were, they were asking us to wait. How far? No, they waited until when Jesus beckoned on them. Jesus will beckon on you. Amen. But Mary finished that sentence. He said, whatever he says to you, do it. Jesus will beckon on you, but what he will say, are you willing to do it? That is where submission comes in. If you're not willing to submit, it will be difficult for you to do. Whatever he says to you, do it. Lord, I receive grace to be able to follow your instruction. See, sometimes what he will say, may not make sense. How can you tell someone, we are looking for wine, sir. You are telling me to go to the well. Sir, oh, you didn't understand what your mother said. They didn't query Jesus. Whatever he says to you, Lord, I receive grace to follow your instruction. As I submit, Lord, grace to follow your instruction. Lord, grant unto me in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lastly, a man, having been trained very well by his father, experienced, maybe as a matter of fact, he was the second vice president of that company. He was born into that company. He understood the company. And at a point, at a point in his life, he felt, I can actually run this company. But my father is still alive. I can't tell him to retire. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'll tell him to share my own inheritance with me. Let me go and show him that I know how to run this company better. And this guy took all that the father gave, went far away from the father to establish, but alas, he failed. But when he failed, this man said, if I stay here, I will die. It is time for me to return to my father. Yes, I may have taken away my inheritance and wasted it. But if I return to my father, it's compassionate. I will beg him to make me one of his servants. But when he came back to the father, the best he wanted was to be a servant who can just feed his belly. But he got much more. He got more than one, what he bargained for. If you can come back, equip yourself back in the, work, in the assignment that God has given to you. I don't know what you are seeking God for, but I can tell you that you will get more than what you bargain in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I receive grace to return back to you. Sometimes we feel it's too difficult. Ha, how will they see me? Disgrace. My father's uh, friends, how will they see me? 
Ah, that your prodigal son, that your boy. This, but he left all those things. Forget about whatever it is that you have done in the past. God is ready to wink away from those and restore you back to your place. It won't take you in as a servant. He said, I no longer call you servant, but I call you what? Friends. Lord, I receive grace to return back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's tell it to God in prayer.